OK, welcome back. So in the last few segments, we've taken this inverted pendulum on a cart. We have simulated the full nonlinear system without control. We've linearized about the fixed point where the pendulum's up to get an A matrix and a B matrix. Um, we've checked that the system is, in fact, controllable. So if I look at the rank uh, of the controllability matrix, it has dimension 4. Uh, so it spans the four-dimensional state space of the position and velocity of both the cart and the pendulum. And then we've also shown that since the system is controllable, I can design a full state feedback u equals minus kx so that I can place the eigenvalues of the closed loop system anywhere I want. Okay? And it's one line of MATLAB where you specify the eigenvalues and it will find this gain matrix k to, to move your system to those eigenvalues. We then take that control law, apply it to the full nonlinear system, and we show that, in fact, we can stabilize this up uh, unstable in inverted pendulum configuration, which is really cool. But it begs the question, where do we place the poles? Where do we place eigenvalues? Where are the best eigs? And that's a really interesting kind of open-ended question. You could spend a long time trying lots of different combinations of eigenvalues, and how do you know when you found the best one? So this is just an amazingly powerful tool in control theory called the linear quadratic regulator. So I'm going to write it out. You have something called the linear quadratic regulator that essentially answers this question. Linear quadratic regulator, or LQR, control. And the idea is, if I can cook up a cost function that tells me how, how bad is it if my state is really slow to converge to where I want it to, so if, if I make this thing really lightly damped, barely stable, it'll take forever to stabilize, to move this thing from point A to point B, can I put a cost on how much that bothers me, and how bad that is if this thing is slow? And can I also put a cost on my actuation U? Maybe it actually costs fuel or something. Maybe it costs energy, or you know, I have to buy a bigger, beefier motor to make this thing move really fast into the stable position. So I'm going to build a cost function. It's going to be J equals the integral. Now, I'm going to integrate from 0 to infinity, but really you could just integrate for a long time from 0 to 10 or 0 to 30 or whatever. So I'm going to integrate from 0 to infinity. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to develop a matrix Q that is going to tell me how bad of a penalty it is if x is not where I tell it to be. So this is an n by n matrix, in this case a 4 by 4 matrix. And I'm going to take x transpose qx. So this is, um, you know, I want this to be a positive number. So I want q to be non-negative, um, so kind of uh, positive, semi-definite. And I'm also going to have a similar term, u transpose r u. And I'm going to add, uh, and x and u are both functions of t, so I'm going to integrate with respect to t. I'm going to add up these penalties. If my state is not where I tell it to be, this thing's trying to stabilize to 0, for example, then this is going to be big. Okay, so I need this thing to stabilize to where I tell it to quickly for this to be small. And I want to not spend a lot of energy doing so, or else this is going to be big. And so Q and R are these matrices. So for example, if I wanted to build Q equals, uh, let's say, 1, 1, 10, uh, and 100, and zeros everywhere else, essentially what that would do is it would say, the first variable in x, which is the position of the cart, I penalize it with 1 if it's not where I tell it to be quickly. Same with x dot. This is the theta dot penalty. It's bigger. I want, I want my, my thing to be stabilized in the vertical position quickly. So I'm going to make this number bigger so that it's more penalized if it's not where I tell it to be, in the vertical up position. And I'm making the theta dot penalty even larger. And you get to play around with these numbers. Basically what you do, I might start with the identity matrix, 
And then if I think that the theta variable is really important, I'm going to bump up theta and theta dot by factors of 10 until I get good performance. And for R, maybe in this case, you know, electricity is cheap. Maybe it, I have a really beefy electric motor. Maybe I overspec my motor. And so I'm going to say R is really small, 0 0.001, basically free. I can really actuate this thing aggressively. And so in MATLAB, if you have Q and R, it turns out that there is an optimal K matrix, an honest to goodness best K protocol. There's a best control law that minimizes this cost function. And that's called the linear quadratic regulator. Okay, so this controller is the linear quadratic regulator. So let's break it down. Linear, it's a linear controller. It's linear matrix times the state. It's a linear full state feedback controller. It minimizes a quadratic cost function. If you plot this thing, it's a quadratic cost in the state and the control, and it has a well-defined minimum cost for some protocol. So we're finding the linear controller that minimizes this quadratic cost function. And regulator just means this will stabilize my system. This system will be stable so that x will go to 0. Okay? And if I tell it a reference value of up and move over you know, 4 units, it will stabilize that system. Okay, so that's what a linear quadratic regulator is. And again, the great thing in MATLAB is that this is just incredibly easy. K equals LQR of A, B, Q, and R. It's that simple. So I need to cook up a Q matrix and an R matrix. I think mine are actually pretty similar to this. I need an A matrix and a B matrix for the linearization. And LQR will give me the optimal controller for that cost function with these cost weights of how much I weight the state deviations and how much I weigh the control expenditure. Okay, so we're going to try this out. Um, let's just fire up MATLAB. So again, same script except now this is LQR cart penned. Um, so I have the same parameters for the cart and the pendulum. I have the same A matrix, same B matrix, but now you'll see I have a Q matrix. Okay, so this is exactly my Q matrix. My Q matrix uh, penalizes theta and theta dot more than x and x dot. And my R matrix says there's not much of a penalty on control expenditure. Control's cheap. Okay? So I run this one simple command, k equals LQR, and that gives me my optimal state feedback law for this case. Okay, and we run the same code to simulate it, the nonlinear system with ODE45 and plot. So I think we're ready to go. Let's try this out. LQR cart penned. Enter. Let's go. So it finds K and it simulates and it does this nice aggressive stabilization to that position I told it to. So this works like a dream. And in fact, I could compute the eigs of A minus B K and see where LQR chose to place them. And so interestingly, it takes one eigenvalue and makes it really aggressive, probably theta dot. You know, it probably corresponds to theta dot. And then the other ones are not so aggressive. And if I wanted to probe this, I actually could. I could, what would I do? I would look at t comma d equals eig of a minus bk. So I get my eigenvectors and eigenvalues. Then I'd look at, let's say, the real part of d. Uh, the diag of the real part of D. So these are my eigenvalues, the real part. And then if I want to see what the eigenvector looked like that corresponds to this most stable eigenvalue, all I have to do is look at the first column of T. And interestingly, it actually looks like the most stabilizing directions are x dot and theta dot. So what this controller is saying is if I want good performance, you better have really good aggressive control of x dot and theta dot. That's how, that's what you want to be super fast, super aggressive. That's got the biggest negative eigenvalue. And I didn't tell it to do this. I just gave it a weight on how much I want it to converge and how much I care about control expenditure. And it tuned it for me. So there's a lot of stuff I'm glossing over. 
for example, how you actually find the minimum, the k that minimizes this, is very interesting and kind of complicated. So there, you could do it with Lagrange multipliers, but you can do it by hand using optimization. Um, and then solving for that k involves solving something called a Riccati equation. And so this is actually expensive for high dimensional systems. This can be, I think, order n cubed in the state dimension uh, x in Rn. So for example, if I'm trying to control a million by million, you know, a million dimensional state system, this is going to be intractable. I'm not going to be able to build an LQR easily for a million state system. Okay? But for our little four dimensional system, really easy to do this in MATLAB in real time. Okay? So there's considerations. Now, what I think is really important to tell you is when I was cooking up this example, spent a few hours doing it, I took about an hour making that nice visualization that actually plots the pendulum in cool colors. I spent a couple of hours getting the nonlinear equations and the linearization. That took the longest time. Developing the control law took me less than five minutes. Okay? Getting the control law is the easy part. Building a model is the hard part. Okay, Building a model and the linearization is, generally speaking, the hard part. The control is incredibly simple in MATLAB. It's one line. It fits in perfectly. It's very clear what it means. Okay, um, And if you wanted to play around with this, what I would recommend is try making R more expensive. So let's do that. Let's say, let's say we're going to make R actually kind of expensive. So I'm going to save this and run it. It's not going to be as aggressive. It takes, it's much slower, slower. And if I look at my eggs, they're a lot less aggressive, right? They're different and they're less aggressive. I could make my control really expensive. I could say, well, I've got a wimpy motor and electricity is super expensive, so I'm going to really penalize control expenditure. And all I have to do is change that one number. And everything else is exactly the same. That's what I love about control design, especially in MATLAB, is if I want to try a bunch of these things, all I have to do is change you know, a couple of numbers. Nothing else changes. And notice it was pretty sluggish. And my eigenvalues are now you know, even less damped. OK, so that's the mile-high overview of LQR. We can see that it actually works on a real nonlinear system, this inverted pendulum on a cart. Very simple to design optimal in some cost function. I didn't tell you how to derive it, but you can look that up in a book or on, on the internet. But it really is optimal linear full state feedback control with respect to this quadratic cost function. Okay, thank you.